This episode is made possible by Wix. Get 25% off your premium plan by following the link below. Time travel is one of the most common and confusing tropes in modern media. The premise is simple. Someone in their current time uses some device or the laws of physics to travel through time, either backwards or forward depending on the subject matter. It's incredibly popular as seen by the sheer number of films and TV shows based on the idea. But if the ability to travel through time is simply dependent on the invention or discovery of some new technology, why haven't people from the future come back in time to visit us? In 2009, Stephen Hawking decided to put the possibility of time travel to the test. He hosted a fancy party, complete with champagne, hors d'oeuvres, balloons, and a big banner that said, Welcome Time Travelers. To make sure that only real time travelers could attend the party, Hawking only released the invitations after the event was over. The card read, You are cordially invited to a reception for time travelers, and listed the date, address, coordinates, and of course the courtesy, no RSVP required. Hawking said, I'm hoping copies of it, in one form or another, will survive many thousands of years. Maybe one day someone living in the future will find the information and use a wormhole time machine to come back to my party, proving that time travel will one day be possible. As he expected, no one showed up, offering at least some evidence that time travel to the past might not be possible. Of course, like any good scientist, Hawking readily admitted that this one experiment doesn't absolutely disprove the idea of time travel, as it could certainly be possible that the people of the future simply didn't know about his party. But assuming time travel is possible, and assuming future time travelers did know about Hawking's party, why might they have declined to show up? If we've learned anything from the movies, it's that time travel often has unforeseen and dangerous consequences. It's not unreasonable to think that if we ever were to discover a reliable method of traveling through time, it would be heavily regulated, and time travelers would have to be thoroughly vetted, monitored, and trained. Let's assume that in the year 3018, the people of the future establish a time force, a highly trained and secretive group that specializes in safely traveling through time. What considerations might they have for sending someone back to a past event, like Hawking's party? The assumed rule number one would be, don't mess with your past self or relatives. As evidenced by films like Back to the Future, things can get a little convoluted when you interfere with your own past self or your past relatives. In Back to the Future, we see a modified example of what's called the grandfather paradox. The idea that if you go back in time and kill your grandfather before he met your grandmother, you would never be born, meaning you wouldn't have existed to go back in time and kill him in the first place, thus creating a paradox. In Back to the Future, Marty accidentally finds himself in his father's place, and has to work to undo his mistake and get his parents to fall in love to save his own existence. Hypothetically, this would be fairly easy to avoid. Just make sure you know where past you or your ancestors were before you travel to that time period and avoid them. Another concern often referenced in film and TV is the butterfly effect. The idea that the simplest action can ripple through time and create dramatic and unforeseen changes. The 2004 film of the same name explores this idea in an interesting way. The protagonist finds he has the ability to send his adult mind back in time to inhabit his younger self's body, and attempts to avoid traumatic events in his past, while unwittingly changing his or his friend's future for the worse. In the case of more traditional time travel, where someone steps into a time machine and appears somewhere in the past in the same physical body, the concern would be more general, rather than specific to that person and his or her contacts. The idea that any small action, such as bumping into someone on a train, could cause horrible consequences and throw the course of the future out of whack is pretty common. And while technically it could be the case, no one seems to think that actions they take today can change the world in any meaningful way. Perhaps that's one reason no one showed up to Hawking's party. Because tiny actions do drastically change future events, and they didn't want to risk their own existence. If that is the case, then we can at least take heart in the fact that our actions are significant, and that we can make a difference in the world. There's your motivation for the day. Another possibility is that time travel is possible in the future, but only forward in time. This seems to be the most likely, as technically we already know it to be possible. In the film Interstellar, we see the protagonist leave Earth while his children are still young. Later on, he receives a video message from them, but they're both adults. This is a dramatized version of what we see when astronauts leave the Earth today. Due to the nature of gravity, if an astronaut had an identical twin back on Earth, when he returned from outer space, he would be very slightly younger than his twin. There are some areas of space where time acts quite differently than elsewhere, such as in the vicinity of black holes. If some brave astronaut wanted to travel to the future, he could orbit a black hole and time would slow down for those aboard the ship. But time would continue at its normal rate on Earth, effectively allowing the ship's crew to move forward more quickly through time. This difference is called time dilation, and it's a fascinating subject. The only problem for those brave time travelers of the future is that as far as we know, there's no reversing this effect. 
If you'd like to see how it works for yourself, there's a time dilation calculator in the description. One final reason that time travelers might not have shown up for Hawking's party is the possibility that while time travel may be possible in the future, we as a species never make it that far. The fact that no one dropped by simply to say, yep, you're right, just keep working on those formulas, could indicate that there's no one left in the future to receive Hawking's invitation. It's an ominous thought, and probably not the case, but it's not beyond the realm of possibility. The most likely scenario, assuming time travel to the past is even possible, is that time travelers would strive to make themselves as boring and unremarkable as possible, avoiding contact with people of the past and simply observing for a while before returning to the future. Who knows, maybe there have always been time travelers in our society, and we've just never noticed them. That being said, if you're not a secret time traveler and you do want to be noticed, what better way to do it than with a sleek new website from Wix? Wix can handle any project you throw at it, whether you want to host videos, share your photo gallery, book clients, sell products, or just about anything else you could ever want. Whether you need a professional website for your own personal use or for e-commerce, music, hotels, or restaurants, Wix does all the heavy lifting, like hosting, custom domains, email marketing, and more, allowing you to focus on the creative side of things. You have total creative freedom over your websites, allowing for limitless possibilities. And you don't even have to be a web designer. Wix caters to everyone regardless of skill level, whether you're a novice, business owner, or seasoned website builder. As a special thank you for watching Second Thought, the first 30 users to build a site using the link below can get 25% off a premium plan by using the coupon code SECOND underscore THOUGHT. To support the channel and start building your own professional website, visit Wix using the link below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the little bell to stay up to date on the latest videos. If you're not sure what to watch next, check out these playlists full of other great content. As always, thanks for watching and supporting Second Thought, and we'll see you next week.